Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Hello and welcome back for another episode of Theory of Pets. I have recently discovered a line of dog products that is currently my favorite to use with our girls. We have a chocolate Labrador retriever, Sadie, who weighs about 75 pounds. And then we have a little beagle mix named Molly, and she weighs just under 30 pounds. So finding a product line that can meet our needs for both dogs can be kind of tricky. But the other day, I stumbled upon a company called Bay Dog, and it's the Chesapeake Bay Dog Company. Their brand is Bay Dog. They have a line of harnesses, collars, leashes, dog toys, and they have a treat pouch as well. And they actually customize their lines. One is for smaller breeds and one is for larger breeds. And after doing some research into the company, I realized that I actually had heard of these products before. They used to be called Your Perfect Puppy, and I actually reviewed their products for our sister site, topdogtips.com, um, about a year ago. I did not realize that they rebranded. One of the struggles that I found with the Your Perfect Puppy products were that they were really durable and made with quality materials, but they were a little bit too heavy for our smaller dog. And little did I know, the company actually realized that as well. And so they rebranded. They're now Bay Dog, the Chesapeake Bay Dog Company. It's actually a veteran-owned business. And today I got to talk with Barton O'Brien, who is the owner and creator of the Chesapeake Bay Dog Company. He discussed with me their products and we talked about uh, being a veteran-owned business and how that uh, affects what he does with his business and how he runs his business. So I got a lot of great tips from him. Um, He talked about the rebranding process as well. Um, I think that anybody that's out there that either has a small company that makes one or two products right now and you're looking to expand or um, anybody out there that's looking to brand a product or rebrand... Uh, This is some really beneficial information that I was happy to have. Um, So I'm going to let you guys listen to the interview and hopefully you got as much out of it as I did speaking with Barton. Barton, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your time. Can you start out by telling our listeners a little bit about yourself, um, your military service, and thank you very much for that, by the way, Um, and also just about how you got switched into the pet industry because that's obviously quite a big jump. Yeah, sure. So um, I started out uh, in the military after college. I went to the Naval Academy, and I served as a Marine for eight and a half years. And after the Marine Corps, uh, I got out and went back to graduate school and ended up working in finance. I moved to London for a while, and um, then I moved back to New York, and I I worked in kind of a, you know, what I would call a complicated area of finance and structured credit. And uh, one day I just woke up and said, you know what, I I don't want to do this anymore. Um, it's it's not you know what I picture myself doing if I'm going to be in the business world. Uh, I want to have my own company, so uh, I quit my job. And the very next day, I picked up uh, my new puppy. And I'd always uh, wanted to have a dog, but you know, as a as a Marine who was gone all the time, and then you know, working on Wall Street and traveling all the time, I just could never uh, have a dog. And so the first thing I did when I quit my job and decided to take a couple months off was go out and get a puppy. Oh, and wow. I spent, yeah, and uh, I named him Walter, and uh, he's now a dog. He just turned three. And um, you know, I spent the first few months just training him. And, uh, and I mean, as, as you know, having an eight-week-old puppy is a full-time job. Absolutely. Right? So, <laughs> so um, and how I got into the pet industry, um, uh, initially – if you're familiar, there's a company called uh, PuppySpot.com, and and their business model was my original idea, which was basically um, helping people find dogs and then taking care of that whole checklist of things that you need to do for people who want to uh, purchase a dog right. instead of uh, rescue a dog. Um, and PuppySpot has taken my idea and gone bananas with it and, and done a really good job and created a company. I had the idea, but I didn't know how to, how to monetize it really. And 
so I had come up with this idea and I called it Your Perfect Puppy. And matter of fact, if you listen to their radio spots, they even say, we'll help you find Your Perfect Puppy. And they put Your Perfect Puppy on their website. So, uh-huh. um, but I always thought, you know, um, I have an idea or two for a product and maybe I can create those and maybe we can sell them online. And uh, that can be kind of um, a side stream of revenue for Your Perfect Puppy, which was the name of my original company. And what I found out pretty quickly was I, I didn't really understand the financial model of Your Perfect Puppy and how to, I couldn't make it work. But the products I was creating were uh, you know becoming kind of popular with store owners in the local area. So uh, I made the decision, you know what, maybe I should just focus on that. And when, when I created a few products, I thought, well, you know, we can just, everybody's selling everything online now. So we'll create products and packaging that's, that's perfect for Amazon.com and for e-commerce. And that's what I did. You know, so like our leashes came in these really nice boxes and things like that. But uh, you know, as it turns out, the, uh, really our business was centered on uh, the wholesale side. And, you know, store owners want something that displays properly in a retail setting. So, you know, our leashes coming in boxes and our tree pouches coming in boxes, you know, it wasn't a great fit, but people really liked the product, so, you know, they bought them anyway, and we ended up in about 300 stores. And I, I kind of realized, you know, I live in Annapolis, Maryland, and um, my colleague, Molly, who works here, you know, we were talking, and we said, if we're going to grow this into a real business instead of just a, you know, a couple of products. We probably need to reinvent the company uh, for retail. And our our idea was to, if you're familiar with the brand uh, Vineyard Vines in New England. Yes, I um, actually I live in Maine, so yes. Okay, sure. So, you know, Vineyard Vines is a great brand, and they're kind of centered around Martha's Vineyard and that whole kind of New England coastal lifestyle, and whether you're buying a Vineyard Vine shirt in Arizona or in Massachusetts, it's it's always got that kind of uh, you know, geographic affiliation with it with a certain lifestyle. Right. And we went we went to the Maryland Waterfowl Festival, which you know I never really I didn't even know existed. <laughs> um, but but you know Molly grew up here and she's been going since she was a little kid and and I I, I didn't even realize this but the Chesapeake Bay where we live is the best duck hunting region you know in the world. And with that, there's a you know a lot of sporting dog culture, and we w- we went to this thing and we sold thousands of dollars of dog harnesses in just a couple of days. And we decided to create a company that, like Vineyard Vines for People, has a geographic and cultural affiliation. Only instead of Martha's Vineyard, ours is the Chesapeake Bay, and that's how um, the, our business, the Chesapeake Bay Dog Company, uh, came about. And we sell under the brand Bay Dog. And so what we did is we took those original Your Perfect Puppy products and we upgraded all the packaging and made it great for retail. And we really listened to our store owners about what they wanted to see. And we upgraded all of the products. And and then we built out the line um, to be a more complete line that a store owner can stock the entire line instead of just one or two products. And uh, we relaunched the company as uh, Bay Dog just at the Global Pet Expo uh, about three weeks ago. Congratulations on that. That's very exciting. Um, first of all, thank you for your service. My husband, too, was he was in the Army, but he was in the military. So thank you for your service, um, of course. And for anybody that's listening that follows my reviews and my um articles on top dog tips I've actually tried um, I I believe it was late last year um, the your perfect puppy products the harness and the leash and uh, the treat pouch as well so I did reviews on those um, and I think you know along with what you said um, very I I agree with um, the packaging and things like that but you know the products are very high quality and one of the things that I noted in my reviews for our viewers uh, I always have people people asking me for quality products at a reasonable price point quite 
quite often, you know, people in the pet industry will recommend um, beds come to mind. They'll recommend these like super awesome orthopedic dog beds, but they cost four hundred dollars, and not everybody can afford right. that. You know, and and you you can see that in any type of product, and especially I think with training products for dogs you can just get into these outrageous price points that people can't afford so you know that was another thing that i really liked about your perfect puppy is not only were they quality products they were at a price point that most people can afford so um i was happy to see the rebranding into bay dog now you know you have some other harnesses um and and additional products coming out which is great i'm excited to try those i actually just received some that i'm going to be uh, testing out and posting reviews for those um as well and when I yeah. put this up so, on, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say I can I can make a couple a couple points on that. So, as part of the Bay Dog rebranding, one thing we decided was strategically as a company, we're going to be dedicated 100 percent to supporting independent retailers, which means we're not going to be on Amazon, and we're not going to be on Chewy. You're never going to have a customer walk into your store if you're a store owner, see a Bay Dog harness, try it on your dog and then pull out your phone and buy it for eight bucks less on Amazon. So we're 100% committed to uh, supporting the independent retailers. And as part of that, we had to think about, if we're gonna be in stores, where are we gonna fit in the retail structure? And this is to your point about a quality product at a better price. So we, we try to create products that compete with the premium brands in the market. So Roughwear, Easy Dog, Kurgo. I think our products uh, really do compete on that level. But uh, if you you know think about some of their harnesses that you see retailing for $40, um, I think our Chesapeake harness is as good as anything on the market, even better than most. And we try to keep the retail price right around $30. So when I think about it from a store owner's perspective, they all have kind of a commoditized brand, which are you know, your basic you know, leashes, collars, harnesses. And then they have a step-up brand, a premium brand for people that want a nicer option. And we, we, that's where we want to be. But we want to be that option that people can afford, instead of having to pay, you know, forty dollars for a harness or thirty dollars for a leash. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, you know, oftentimes people look strictly at price point and then you're shopping for a leash that costs you $4 at Walmart or, you know, one of the big box stores and it's a very thin, cheap nylon product that's going to fray and come apart and you're going to end up buying another leash down the road. Um, so I think, you know, one of the things I always recommend to people is don't look strictly at price point, but at the same time, everybody's on a budget and you do have to factor that in. So finding the highest quality product at the lowest price point does definitely for me seem to be one of the biggest issues for pet parents. And it's not just in, um, you know, supplies like leashes and harnesses, but from everything from food to grooming products and everything else. So um, that really piqued my interest about your company, um, you know, and, and, Another thing that interested me was the fact that you guys are focused on the small retailers in this day and age. You see very few companies that actually do that. Most of them don't care how they sell the product and how they make a profit as long as it gets out to people. Um, so the fact that you stand behind your smaller retailers and the independent retailers, you know, that's a big draw for me as well. Yeah, I, you know, I think there's a... Uh... You, you, nowadays, you kind of have to be one or the other. It's as a as a new company, um, it's tough to it's tough to do both. Um, you know, if you're a premium name in the industry, uh, then then you can do that. As a new company, we're not. So we we decided that uh, we're better off going with um, you know independent stores. And so far, we're we're uh, we're in several hundred stores already. And um, you know, I think. What, when we created our pricing structure, we try to create enough margin in there to accommodate distributors as well. And so our real focus is on um, finding the right distributors and the right sales reps uh, to get the brand out there because we know once store owners uh, see it, touch it, feel it, um, and, and look at the price point that, that they're going to want to carry our line. Do you think that being a veteran gives you any uh, advantages in the business world? Do you think some of the things that you learned in the military you carry over with you into your business strategy? Uh, well, I think everything. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, 
I mean, for, for, for me personally, um, you, you know, my, my experience, I spent eight years uh, as a Marine, but then I, you know, I went to graduate school and then I, I worked on Wall Street and in the business world a little bit. And so, you know, I think bringing all of those experiences together, um, you know, kind of guide my thought process when I think through um, Bay Dog. But, you know, we're not, here, here's the thing about our business. Um, you know, I, I make the joke, it, it's not Airbnb, right? We're not disrupting anything. Um, you know, this is never going to be a skyrocket um, in terms of growth just because these are me too products. I mean, we launched a dog harness that I think is a really excellent dog harness, but there's a lot of dog harnesses out there, right? Um, our leashes are really well made and they've got a couple little twists that differentiate them, but they're still dog leashes. So, you know, if we're going to compete in this, in this industry, we, we have to do something that other people don't. And so it, it, it's not just going to be providing a good quality product at a good price in a timely manner. It's got to be, you know, being dedicated specifically to retailers and, and having the best customer service and understanding that the customer is always right and doing the little things right and, and then uh, being creative about our, our product line. You know, it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. And I know Bay Dog, so you you have started putting out the harnesses and things like that, but it sounds like you have some plans already for the future as well to expand your product line. Yeah, so um, I, I just spent uh, a week overseas working with our manufacturers and our designers um, to expand the line, and they get the products absolutely right. You know, we're very particular – as to, you know, who we partner with for production. And so we're coming out with a, a dog backpack that I think will, uh, so it'll be a two-piece backpack. It'll have, have a harness, which will be similar to our current Chesapeake harness, only it'll be uh, bigger and padded on both sides to accommodate a clip-on backpack, um, which has a bunch of little extras in it as well. And we're looking to launch that in at least two colors to start. And we may expand that in probably four sizes. And then along with that, we'll have a dog life jacket. Uh, we're, we're just finalizing the design this week, and we'll start our production run. So hopefully by the end of the summer, uh, we can have dog life jackets out on the market. And then we're working really hard uh, with a couple designers on our own line of, like, fall dog apparel, words I never thought I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, but you know, we live uh, we live in the Chesapeake Bay, and it got really cold this past year. And you know, my dog, who's a lab who loves the snow, um, you know, there were some days where we'd be walking down the street, and and the ice and the salt really bothered his paws. And uh, you know, you could just tell he was he was freezing, so and he'd stop and start to lick his paws. So we're looking at uh, possibly some dog boots for the to, just to keep this this ice and the salt out of their paws. And, and to keep some of the, you know, keep the dogs warm. So we're looking at launching that this fall. And, we're, and, and as you look at our line and you look at our, our brand, the Chesapeake Bay Dog Company, um, we're, we're very mindful to keep everything consistent um, and, and, you know, the same kind of, of style. So I think, I think, you know, you can get in trouble if you try to do too much and try to get all over the place. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those, I yeah, agree with things. that. Yeah, those are the things we're focused on, and we, we constantly have people come up to, you know, saying, hey, you can make collars with, you know, this design on them and that design on them. And, and you know, the other thing is you've got to be careful how many SKUs you have. We have 109 SKUs at the moment, and, you know, I think when it's all said and done, we could be closer to probably 300. Uh, but if you start getting a collection that's much bigger than that, then, then really, uh, you know, it, it becomes overwhelming for store owners. I think it becomes overwhelming for pet owners as well. You know, that's one of the things that I, I often hear from people is that, you know, they hear um, bigger companies, you know, they hear good things about the company. But then when you look and they offer 15 different harnesses or 15 different colors, it's like, you know, you've narrowed it down to 
a good high quality company, but how do you choose between, you know, the 15 different options that they offer that are all fairly similar, but have, you know, just a few differences. So um, I think that's important to focus on as well. Yeah, you know, you, you brought up earlier that we launched a second harness and, um, you know, the concept is still the same. So all of our products are basically designed for my dog, Walter, right? Um, but my dog, you know, he, he's kind of a chunky 100-pound lap, right? And um, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you an example. Our tree pouch, which is really our first product, uh, I was walking home from the dog park just after I'd gotten him. He was, you know, probably 12 weeks old. And we'd been playing fetch with a tennis ball, and it was all slobbery, and I didn't want to put it in my pocket because it's disgusting. And I had one of those little uh, plastic poop bag dispensers on my leash, and it broke, and the poop bags unraveled and went all over the sidewalk. And I had a pocket full of dog treats because I was training him at the time, and I would inevitably forget the dog treats were in there, and I would put them through the laundry, uh, and that was just a mess. And I thought, well, I, I can solve all three of these products at once. So that's when I created uh, what is now our Frisco Bay treat pouch. And you know, there's a lot of treat pouches out there. This is the only one I know of that attaches directly to your leash handle. And so it's kind of always right at your fingertips when you're walking your dog. And it's got a little mesh pocket you can put a slobbery tennis ball in. And it's um, it's got a little poop bag dispenser on the side. So it kind of solves all three of those problems. But it's also got a big... Uh, metal bell clip on the back so if you don't want to you know use it when you're walking your dog if you want to use it for off leash training sessions you've got that optionality and it's got a velcro pocket on the outside so you can put like credit card or id or some money in there and so basically it's uh, got everything you need while you're walking your dog uh, so i created that for my dog walter and then i created uh, our harness for him and i wanted a harness with a handle on the back so i could use it to you know, pull him out of the water or, or, you know, pull him off another dog if he's feeling kind of amorous. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you, I mean, you always have a reason Absolutely. To, uh, to, to be able to get control of your dog. And uh, so we created a really nice pet harness, but it's really not made for smaller dogs. And so we, we launched it with a size extra small, but we didn't sell a lot of them. So, you know, we realized that it just, it, it's just not a good harness for a 10-pound dog. So what we did is we created a whole new line of harnesses um, that are just all four sizes exist below our current small, and and I believe uh, that's one of the ones we sent you. It, it's you know made to be the same the same concept. It still has a handle on the back. It's still padded, and, it's, and it still has all the benefits of the bigger harness. But it's made for a ten pound dog, and we softened the colors up um, a little bit, and then. Uh, so it comes in a different range of colors, uh, you know, slightly more feminine, softer colors, like teal and pink and violet. And then uh, we realized that our leashes are also just big, beefy leashes made for a 100-pound dog. And so what we did then is we created a new leash, and we matched that to the small harness. So now, now we have products that aren't just made for my dog, but are made for everybody's dog. And coming from someone who has tested those products and has two dogs that are very different in size we have our chocolate lab sadie who uh, weighs about 75 pounds and then we have a little beagle mix molly and she weighs about 28 pounds um so when i tested the your perfect puppy products that is one of the things that i noticed uh particularly with the leash it was wider and beefier like you said and you know it worked for her fine but um it was definitely a little bit too big for the smaller dog. So uh, I'm excited to try the Bay Dog uh, harness with her and check that out and see. Um, we are, we live in Maine, so we're kind of the same climate that you are. You know, things, seasons change. We get some severe weather in the wintertime and we're very active with our dogs. We do a lot of hiking, a lot of walking, a lot of things with them. Um, my parents live on the river, so they're swimming almost every day in the summertime. And like you said, you know, things like having just a harness to lift your dog up out of the water if you're very active with your dog you know how important a little detail like that can be just having that harness to grab if you're on a hiking trail and another hiker comes by or somebody comes with a dog um, you know that might come near your dog you know you just having that control um, and it's simple things like that I think that you've put a lot of thought into that will really benefit the pet owners that are looking at bay dog products yeah, and then, and then, you know, we had to upgrade the packaging so they display properly uh, in retail. And 
and so we, we designed these really nice hanger tags that have the size chart on the back and, and all of that. So, and then, you know, the last thing is we, we have to guarantee our products. You know, if you, you buy our, anytime you have a product like a, a dog harness that's going to get chewed on and that is sewn by human hands, um, you're going to have an issue eventually. You know, you're going to have a, a harness come undone or a dog's going to chew his way of through our Of course. Arms. So, yeah, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's going to happen. So, you know, we have to, we have to stand by our products. And so, you know, we offer 100% money back guarantee with everything that we make. That's fantastic. Again, you know, something that, I hear a lot of pet owners complain about is, and even with the products from the higher price points, if you're spending money on a quality product, but the customer service after you buy it is not very good, you know, that can be very frustrating for pet owners that I spent $60 on this harness and now I have a problem with it, but they're not going to help you. It would have been a lot better to buy a 20 or $30 harness, but the company will stand behind it if something does happen. So I think that's definitely something important that pet parents need to remember as well. Yeah. And, and I don't know the, the anecdote, but uh, there's something along the lines of if you have a bad experience, uh, you know, you'll tell 10 people. And if you have a good experience, you'll tell five people. Be, ha, you know, yep, kind of how thing. true is that? Yeah. And so, you know, you definitely want to avoid those bad experiences for consumers. Oh, certainly. Um, but, you, you know, as far as being a veteran on uh, business goes, I, I think some people, when they, you know, and, and we just designed uh, some signage along those lines to put it in the stores when they see that we're a veteran-owned company, uh, you know, that oftentimes will affect the buy decision because people like to support veteran-owned businesses. Yeah, certainly. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and you know, we, uh, we we support a few veterans' charities uh, that are veterans' dog veteran dog charities actually if you will so like saveavet.org and the warrior dog foundation that help you know transitioning service dogs oh that's fantastic yeah again i have to thank barton for speaking with me taking time out of his day to do this interview um again you know i learned a lot while i was talking to barton about um the branding process and uh, what goes into the rebranding. I also, as I said, I have done an extensive review on the Bay Dog harnesses and leashes as well as their tree pouch. So if you guys want to see that, um, that is on our sister site, topdogtips.com. I can share a link to that as well underneath this podcast. If you guys have any questions for me or any questions that I might be able to pass on to Barton or the Bay Dog team, feel free to share those on our website, theoryofpets.com. And while you're on there, if you could just leave a quick review on iTunes, again, that really helps me when I reach out to experts like Barton and try to get them to come on the show. I can show them that you guys are listening, you're out there, you're enjoying it, and you want to hear more. So I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you guys back next time.